Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to another tutorial on PyQGIS. This is the second tutorial, and we're going to be working with vector data this time. Um, before we get started again, I just want to show you that I already have a tutorial up for this on my website on opensourceoptions.com. Just go to Tutorials, Python, and PyQGIS, and then we're going to work with loading and symbolizing vector layers. So let's head back over to QGIS and get started. So once again, the first thing we'll do is go to Plugins. We'll open up the Python console. That'll take just a sec to load here. And like I did last time, I'm going to open up a new script. Uh, this tends to make things just a little easier. This is a script from the last tutorial. I'm going to close that one out, and we'll start with a brand new script. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just put in a path to a shapefile. And this is uh, a shape file of streams and stream orders that I just have here on my computer. So I'm going to set my path to that. This is a different shape file than I show uh, in the online tutorial. Well, this will give you some additional work with data here. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to want to import this into my QGIS project. And to do that, I do iface.add vector layer. I'm going to give it the file name. I'm going to give it an empty layer name. And then we give it a data provider, which is going to be OGR. And you can use OGR for pretty much uh, any vector layer you import. I just gave it an empty file name because using this, an empty layer name, because using this method, it will give it the file name when I import it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and click Run here. And what should happen, as you'll see, it imported um, my stream order shapefile, which is just a, a stream network. Okay, I'm going to go back over. I'm going to remove this. And then we're going to continue on. Okay, so let's say I want to import this, and then I want to change the symbology to something different, maybe a red dashed line. We can do that by creating a new symbol. And this is a vector layer, so we want to do QGS line symbol, and then we'll do dot create simple. And what this will allow us to do is it will allow us to put some dictionary arguments in so that we can change the line style, for example. And so we're going to create a dictionary that changes the line style to dashed and the line color to red. And so we'll do it like this, um, curly braces, and then we'll do line underscore style colon dashed, and then we'll do a comma and color red okay and then once we have that symbol we need to then apply it to the renderer and then repaint the layer and we'll do that simply by layer dot renderer oh, i'm gonna spell it right renderer dot set symbol and then we'll pass to it symbol. And then we'll do layer trigger repaint. Okay. So let's go ahead and click run. And what should happen is we should get uh, a red dashed line. And I forgot to close um, my quotation there. That would have been an error. So let's go ahead and click run here. And we have an error. Let's just go ahead and check this out and make sure I got this correct. Okay, so the problem is create simple here. It's not. It's a lowercase c on create, not a not an uppercase. So let's click run again. And we have one more problem here on this line. Let me just check that. And I simply forgot to put uh, parentheses right here. Let's click run again. Okay, and there it goes. So you can see that it didn't do the dashed, and that could be because I gave it the wrong 
word there. So I'm going to remove all these layers uh, and I'm going to go check and make sure this is correct. Okay, and so this should be dash, not dashed. So let's go ahead and run this again. And there you go. Now you can see that I've uploaded a red layer, red dashed layer. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this layer again. Um, I'm just going to make a note here about what all this is. So this is going to be our simple uh, vector symbology. And I'm going to comment all this out, and we're going to do something a little more complicated next. Okay. So what we'll do next is we'll create graduated symbology. And what graduated symbology is, for those of you who don't know, is it's just going to... Um, it's going. It's just going to symbolize things based on values in a field. Um, so, actually, let's just go ahead and I'm going to run some things in the command line here to, to give you an example of what you can do. So let's bring this layer back in. Okay, so I've got this layer back in here. And I'm just going to print out the fields in this layer. So for field in layer dot fields okay and I'm going oh I forgot to put a colon in there uh, and so we'll say print field Let's see if that does what I want it to it might need to be field name let me just check on that yes it is field dot name so let's go up to that and let's do field dot name I can spell correctly and type well here. And I'm having an error. I think it's my indentation. So let's go up. Um, let's tab that and let's hit enter. Okay, it looks like that should work. Okay, and so here we go. So you can see that I have these different field names. And so grid code um, is the one that's going to give me the stream order. And so what I'm going to do is I want to symbolize this based on stream order. So I want to break out things maybe with the stream order, you know, greater than two into one color and everything that's one and two in a different color. And graduated symbology will allow me to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to um, remove this layer and then we'll come back and we're going to start working on the graduated symbology. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to define my the field I want to use. So I'll call it TF for target field, and that's going to be this grid grid underscore code. Okay, um, then I'm going to make a range list. So this is going to be a list of the range values that we break out into graduated symbols, and then I'm going to set an opacity which is just going to be equal to 1. Okay, And so then let's go ahead and set the values for our first range. Um, so let's just type here, create symbology for first range. And so we'll have a min value, which will be basically 0. And um, then we'll have a max value, which will be, well, let's start at 2. We can always change that if we want to. Okay. And so that gives us our min and max values uh, for the symbology. And then I'm going to give this uh, a label, so we'll call it lab, and we'll just call it uh, group one. Uh, so now I want to add a color for this group. And before I can do that, I need to import cute GUI. So we're going to do from qgis.pyqt import uh, qt GUI and that will give us uh, some functions to work with colors. So I'll just come down here and do uh, call this color1 equals qt GUI dot color and I'm just going to give it a hex code. I'm just going to make these a yellow color. So that's the hex code for a yellow color. And then I'll make the other group a cyan color. Okay. 
So now we have these things set, we need to apply them to some kind of symbol or render definition that will allow us to then apply it to uh, our layer and then we, we can symbolize it. Okay, so let's create the symbol here. So we'll do a symbol. This is going to be a QGS symbol. We're going to make it a default symbol and we're just going to give it layer and a geometry type. Okay, and I just realized that we haven't done a very important thing here, and that is to actually define a layer before we get started. And so to do this, we're going to do our layer a different way. We're not going to use iFace. We're going to do layer equals QGS vector layer. And we're going to do the same. We're going to give it a file name. It's going to be the same file name. Here I'm going to actually give it a layer name because this will render a little bit differently when it's added to the table of contents. Contents, And then OGR. Okay. So that's going to go the same way. Um, and then we're just going to give it the geometry type of that layer, which in our case is a line. And then we can go symbol. And we can set the color. And we can give it color 1. And then we can do symbol and set opacity and we'll give it our opacity. Okay, so that sets up our symbol and now we need to make sure we give the symbol um, the ranges and the label set up for. And so to do that we'll create uh, range 1 which is going to be a QGS renderer range and we're going to give it our min val, we're going to give it our max val, we're going to give it um, the symbol and then we're going to give it the label. Okay, let me just check and make sure I've done that correctly. Okay, that should be correct and now, well, excuse me, and now we, what we can do is we have our range list we can do range list and we'll dot append and we'll add range one to that list. Okay. Now let's set up the second symbol. So I'm just going to copy this. We're basically going to do the exact same thing here. Uh, we're just going to change things a hair. Okay, so we're going to grab this, we're going to put it down here. Um, our minimum value, we're going to make this 2.1, and we're going to make this, I believe the maximum is 4, and we're going to call it group 2. And just, I'm going to grab a different color for this. So this will be a uh, cyan color, and let's name this color 2. And we want to keep this the same. We're going to make this color 2. Um, min val, max val, we'll make this range 2. Okay. And so we're going to add that range. So now we have two different groups set up. One that goes from 0 to 2 and one that goes from 2 to 4. And they have different colors. And we've added them to our range list. Now we need to take that range list and we need to... Um, apply the ranges to our layer. So let's go ahead and do that next. And so we'll name this group renderer for rendering groups. And it's going to be a QGS graduated symbol renderer. And we don't need to give it a name, so we'll just leave that blank. And then we will give it range list for the ranges. Now we need to set a mode for this. And so we'll do group renderer set mode QGS graduated symbol renderer 
um, and this is going to be equal interval. And so these are going to have uh, different methods or modes when you do this in, uh, like in your symbology tab in QGIS. One of those is equal interval. Um, there are some other ones that are like going to be fixed. Um, that are going to be like natural breaks, things like that. We'll just use equal interval. We're setting those intervals up here, and so this won't matter a whole lot uh, in the end. But okay, so we've, we've got that set. Now we need to set the field that it's going to base this, that it's going to symbolize. So we need to do group renderer dot set class attribute. And this is where we're going to put our field in. And what do we call that? We call that TF, which is grid code. So we set TF. Okay. So now we have a group renderer, and we need to apply that to our layer. So we're going to do layer dot set renderer, and we're going to do group renderer. And now that we have our renderer set, we can go ahead and add that layer to the map. And we'll do that with QGI, oh, QGS project instance. And we'll do add. I gotta check and see if it's capital or not. I always forget. It's not capital. Add map layer layer. Okay, I'm just going to make sure that we correctly defined this layer. Looks like we did. So now, hopefully, we'll quick run, won't have any errors, and this will add that symbolized layer to QGIS. Run script. Okay, and there you have it. So you can see here that we have our layer. These main streams are symbolized in cyan, uh, the, the order three and greater, and everything less uh, is symbolized in yellow. And so that's how you can customize some symbology for QGIS. Um, as you can imagine, you can write some functions to automate a lot of this and can automate the number of classes or the number of groups you have and automate the, the ranges and the break values and the colors for all of this. Um, once again, remind you this is on my website. I'll include this code uh, in a repository, a GitHub repository that will be linked on my website so that you can access that. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions for other videos, anything you'd like to see, uh, please go ahead and leave a comment below. And I'm going to keep working on this QGIS, PyQGIS tutorials. And so if you subscribe, you can get notified when the new ones come out. Again, thanks for watching.